Asmad Guru Bionamaha, Asmad Parama Guru Bionamaha, Asmad Sarva Guru Bionamaha. So today we have a, another class on Vedic chanting, and we're going to start where we left off by considering the first part of the Taitiri Upanishad, Shikshavali, Shikshavali, uh, which was the lesson on chanting. Uh, and we're going to look at that now, and we're going to explain a few little uh, nuances of the pronunciation. Uh, so. I'll just share that screen. Okay, so. And anybody has any questions or comments, you can just break in uh, whenever you like. Uh, also, I'm looking at the chat, so if anybody wants to ask anything, they can put the chat up. Okay, so we always start off by, we always start off by revering the guru or gurus in this case in plural so uh normally we wouldn't start with a with an om but we would just start with shri guru bio namaha right shri guru bio namaha meaning obeisances to all our gurus uh and then harihi om now here we see that the uh om uh, harihi is uh the full visarga is pronounced because there is no the, the echo is there because there's there's no Sunday, I believe, according to a Sunday rule with Om. So that, so we might find actually uh, there's an exception to this in Narayana Upanishad uh, with uh, Brahmanyo Devaki Putro Brahmanyo Madhusudan Om. In Narayana Upanishad, it goes Brahmanyo Devaki Putro, which means the son of Devaki or Krishna is the supreme Brahman. Brahmanyo Devaki Putro. Brahmanyo Marusudanam, the Supreme Brahman, is uh, Marusudana. And at the end, they just tack on an Om, Marusudanam. So somehow or other, that Om becomes part of the, the Marusudana. But normally, there's a rule in Sanskrit grammar that Om is considered separate from other, uh, other, other words because it's a transcendental syllable which represents the Vedas. And therefore, we, we, we will consider there to be a break here at least in pronunciation between the Harihi and the Om. So, uh, so people say Harihi Om. And also between the O and the M in this, uh, the O and the Anushwara, the M with the dot under it here, right? There should probably be either three or four written, giving us the time length to hold the Om. So we, if we remember from the previous uh, classes, we were talking about which is the Pramana sloka from Mahabhasya by Patanjali, which talks about the fact that a short syllable, one, clip, one snap of the fingers long, or one strike of the, of the thigh long, is, uh, is, is, one, is, is a short syllable, a short, a short vowel. A, sh a short vowel is, is, just, is pronounced with one snap. Uh, a longer vowel with two snaps, right? One with a macron on top or, or a diphthong like A-I-O-L with two snaps, right? And then if it's more than two, which we don't usually see in classical Sanskrit, but here in Vedic Sanskrit, we sometimes see it mostly. They put a number in between. They'll put a three or a four, meaning you have to hold it for one, two, three. So it would be om or om, right? So it's either Harihi Om or Harihi Om, right? Either three or four. So here they haven't written it. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I can make a, I can write this out in a better way with, with more of the, so it's easier for you to read it and read the little nuances that we're talking about here. So that's a nuance in Hari Om, okay? Moving on, we have another Om here, this Om and this Om, the first Om and the, Om here is not necessary because we're starting with Harihi Om. So we have this Sham No Mitra Sham Varunaha. The first thing I want to point to you is the M, the Anushwara, before the letter N. When an Anushwara with an M with a dot underneath it is followed by any other nasal or, in fact, any other letter of one of the five classes, which comes in the five classes of, uh, are pronounced, uh, five classes of letters in the alphabet are pronounced in different parts of the mouth. That Anushwar being a pure nasal, a pure 
a pure uh, a pure nasal is uh, takes on the flavor or the sound of the takes on the, the sound of the of the letter that comes after it. So in this case, we have the anushwara M with a dot under it, followed by N in the next word. So optionally, it can be it can be pronounced shamno, or it can be pronounced. In in fact, when you're going faster, it's going to sound more like shanno. It's going to so sound it's going to sound like the N. Shanno, shanno. So it's an optional uh, Sunday that this can be written as shamno. In future, if you want, I'll write it out like that. And instead of writing shamno, I can write shan no. It's not incorrect in Sanskrit grammar. It's correct. It's optional to write it like that. But it's not optional to say it like that if you're saying it quickly. If you're making a break between the two words, sham and no, you have to pronounce it like that. But when you say sham no, when you say it quickly, you're going to, or in a sentence without a break, without an, without an air, without a dunder or, or a comma or a period or full stop, you, a breath mark, you have to say it shanno, shanno. So you're going to hear people saying shanno, mitra, shambarunaha. Next thing I want to point out is this Visarga here. That was about Anishwar. About Visarga, the Visarga is an H with a dot under, there are three types of Visargas. One is the Visarga that we see here. Another one is the Visarga that comes before a K or a KH. That's called Jihomulia, and it's pronounced as like, like, ak, ak, kak, ak, like in the Scottish word lock, or in the German ik, uh, ik bin, you know? Uh, so it's ak, it's pronounced at the, at the back of the, back of the mouth and the throat. That's when it's followed by K or KH. And we'll usually see that with a vertic with a, a horizontal line underneath it to show it. Here, here, of course, we're looking at the website, sanskritdocuments.org, so they don't put it there, but I can put it there. I should write this out next time for the next class. I'll write this out and I'll put it there. Okay. Uh, in this particular case, the Visarga also gets flavored just like the Anushra gets flavored by the next. There's a Sunday that's optional between the Visarga and the next letter. And especially when we get these S's followed by Visarga followed by the, any of the three S's changes into that S. That's a, that's a rule in Sanskrit. So here we have, not only do we have Sun No, Shan No, Shan No, but we have also Mitrash Sham, Mitrash Sham, Sham No, Mitrash Sham. Mitrasham. This Visarga H with a dot is going to change into an S with an acute accent or a palatal S. I will write it out that way. Maybe next time I'll write it in both ways, but I'll write it out that way, which will make it much, much easier for people to, to read and chant from reading. Of course, the proper way to learn Shabbatic chanting is just by hearing and not by reading. So these sort of things don't need to be explained to people who are just learning by hearing. But since we're learning by reading and by hearing as well, it's important for us to, to see the little nuances. So that's the second nuance I wanted to point out. The so first one with the Om, second one with the, the Samno, with the, the Visarga and the S turning into the Visarga turning into S before Sham. Then Sham Varunaha, Sham No Bhavartyadiyama. Now, uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out here was um, somebody was asking me about how do you pronounce the word B R A H M A, Brahma, right? Brahma. Okay. So apparently, I found out from my Sanskrit teacher that there's a that there is a there's a rule, there's a sutra. Uh, all the grammatical sutras, uh, the grammatical rules are given in sutras. There's a sutra that comes in one of the shikshas. Now, what's a shiksha? A shiksha is a special book which is taught, which, is, which explains about pronunciation. Okay, so this, there, is, there are many different shikshas according to the different Vedas, and we, maybe next time I'll, I'll show you a list of all the different shikshas there are, books on, on pronunciation. Because Vedic pronunciation in different Vedas is slightly different. 
the rules are slightly different. And also you have, in grammar, you have what's called panini shiksha. So panini also wrote a shiksha. And then you have other people, other sages who wrote a shiksha. But before panini and before the other sages wrote the shiksha, the original shikshas for the Vedas, the original books on pronunciation for the Vedas, they're called pratishakyas. Pratishakyas. So those Vedic texts are called pratishakyas. And they'll give you the original um, the original understanding of how to pronounce a particular Veda. For, for the Taittiriya branch of the Krishna Yajur Veda, which is what we're studying, right? We have the Taittiriya Patishakya. I can send everybody a copy of it with the tr English translation and the translation of the commentary also. It's not that long, but it's been translated by Whitney. If everybody wants it, they can have it. You'd probably be very bored by reading it, but uh, it does give you the, the rules. Okay, now, but there are some rules which are not even in there. So in some of the shikshas, they have these rules. So apparently, according to, according to my Sanskrit teacher and some other people, they found this rule somewhere in some shiksha that if an H comes before an M in a word, that it's actually pronounced the other way around. This is an exception. So you, hear, you will hear people saying, bra. Do I just have a summary of the rules listed by chance? No, I do not. Maybe I can, whatever. Um, okay, so, so, uh, so you'll hear a lot of people there say Brahman or Brahma, Brahma, trying to pronounce the H before the M. But in actual fact, it's pronounced Brahma, Brahma. Brahma. Now, some people will tell you it's pronounced like B R A M M A, and some people will tell you it's pronounced B R A M H A. But apparently, according to this sutra, it's supposed to be M H A. There are some other words also that this that that this rule applies to, where you have a nasal uh, before uh, you have a, an H before a nasal. For instance, the word uh, for, for fire, another word for fire is vahni, V-A-H-N-I. And apparently it's pronounced vanhi. Okay, although I, I have may, maybe have never heard that. But anyway, uh, just for now, uh, the answer to the question is, how do you pronounce B-R-A-H-M-A? Uh, that is Brahma, according to according to this, and I'm still searching all the different shikshas that I can find to find this rule. So when, when I come up with it, I'll be very happy um, because I found the sutra. In, uh, what does it say? In Harinama uh, Midavakaranam, there's a statement, Matra Lagav Matram Putrotsavaha, that if you can find, if you can shorten something into a sutra, if you can find the sutra or whatever it is, that you're as happy as if you just gave birth to a son. Okay, so that it's, it's very, I mean, when I find the answer to some of these questions, um, I'm very happy. Okay, so that's just, that's all I really wanted to say about this, these, um, these mantras and these things that we, that we talked about last time. And I wanted to go on to something else. So before we go on to something else, does anybody have any questions about that? And you can unmute and just ask the questions. Okay. With respect to that rule, Swami, um, yep about Brahmane, mm -hmm. if it's a, if it's Brahm, like a, a long R before the H, then is it also Brahmane or is it Brahmane? The long, the long or short A before the H or the M makes no, it, you just have to, pre you always pronounce the letter the way it's written, except in this case, you're switching the M's and the, and the M and the H. That's okay, all. because it's in Purusha Suktam, so that's what I was wondering. Okay, great. In Purusha, Thank you. In Purusha Suktam, there's a long A. Yeah. Okay, so we should understand that there's a difference. Uh, there's a couple of different words here. Uh, let me see. There's a word, there's a word with, with short... There's a word with short, uh, 
why don't we do this? Why don't we go here? I'm gonna make, I'm gonna show you the, here's my, here's my uh, um, dictionary program. Okay, so there, let's, let's look at exact. Okay, so there's a word with a, with a short A, BR short A, HMA, right? It can mean the one self-existent spirit, the absolute, yeah? Now let's see what happens if we make it long A. It's also something. It also means the holy, the divine, right? It, it also means that. So in, in both cases, uh, for instance, uh, this, was, this came up in another class that we had uh, just recently, is the word Brahm, Brahmana, Brahmana, right? If it's a long A, Bra, Brahmana, it refers to the text, Brahmana. The texts like the Samhitas, Brahmanas, Aranyakas, and Upanishads. And if it's a short A, it, 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 it refers to the actual priest, the person who's a priest, the Brahmana priest. So we just, you know, longs and shorts, we just have to, we just have to um, remember that they are, they're pronounced long and short. We don't have to, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to know anything else, but this, the, the only thing question is this H, H and M being transposed. So um, I will, uh, um, as far as the, uh, as the, as when it's, when it's in Purusha Shukta, then we have to see how it's pronounced. Well, we should be listening actually. Yeah, yeah, it's also pronounced many times in um, Vishnu Sasranama also. So, many times in Vishnu Sasranama. You know, Okay, yeah, so we so, so we we learned so now if now uh, if this if there are any more comments we I want to move one, on. Just just one more, sorry. Sure, no problem. Um, with respect to um, the Anaswara question, and you said that it's an optional rule, and you said it's optional in writing. Which um, one? Which one? The Anaswara but, or the or the Visarga? Yeah, like like not Shamno, but Shanno, Shanno. Yeah. So it's it's optional in the way it's written. Yes. But never when it's chanted, you said. When it's chanted, you have to say, if, if it's chanted like one sentence, it will have to be shan no. So, if, Om Shan no as long, as, as long as there is, yeah. okay, the way it works is you'll hear people chanting different mantras. For instance, the Pranayam mantras. You, you'll, hear, you'll hear people break the Sundays because they're saying it slower. If you, bre if you say it's like saying when you say the mantra slower, you have to start breaking the Sundays. When you don't say it slower, you have to make put the Sundays in. You have to put in the Sundays. So, for instance, uh, they say, Om Apo Jyoti Rasom Ritam Brahma Bor Bhavasavarom in Pranayam, right? But if you say it slowly, Om Apo Jyoti Raso Raso Amritam Brahma Bor Raso Rasa Am. Rasaha Om Amritam, you break it because you put in more air there. You put in some. You, if you put in a break there, then you have to you have to make it into a visarga again. Where you've dropped out the visarga and it's become Rasomritam. Rasa Om Rasa Amritam, it's Rasa Amritam, right? If you break it, it's Rasa Amritam. If you put it together, it's Rasomritam. If you break this, it's sham no. If you put it together, it's shan no. Got it? Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, Swami. Thank you. Yeah, somebody's saying about Samita Pad and Padapat. Padapat means you break the Sundays. Padapat means you break up the words. Pada, what a pada means a word. Does everybody know what? Okay, a pada means word. Okay, somebody getting some feedback there. Okay, so the word the word akshara. Okay, varna means letter. Akshara means syllable. Pada means word. Right. They can sometimes they're used in slightly different ways, but we're going to use those words like that. We're going to say varna for letter. We're going to use akshara for syllable. Which what is a syllable? It's a thing which you can say. With what it only has one vowel. Syllable cannot have more than one vowel. So a group of letters, including 
may or may not include consonants, but there's one vowel, right? And that's a syllable. That's an akshara. And then uh, pada means a word. So words are made up of syllables, which are made up of letters. Padas are made up of akshuras, which are made up of varnas. Okay? All right. So there's a different... We can chant the Veda in different ways. There's actually what we call astavikritis. In, uh, there's eight different ways. There's Ganapat, Jadapat, Dwajapat, Rekapat. There's all these different ways of chanting the Veda. Yeah? And, um, and we go into it another time. But the point is, the point is that right now we should only understand about two. There's just chanting it all the way through. Chanting it the way through and breaking each word up. If we break each word up, we have to break the Sundays. The Sundays are there. The Sunday rules are there to combine words together and make it easier for us to move from one word to the next because we're saying the last, the last letter in the word and the first letter in the next word close together, so we want to slip into the next word easily. Our pronunciation wants to slip into the next word easily. So we want, we want to blend those together. So that's what Sunday is, okay? So when we're chanting like that, Samita parts like that. However, some of the Anishwar rules like um before ya. Okay, that, that's also optional. All right, there's a, there's a, uh, Gwen Chai is also mentioning that Anishwar, the end with the dot under it, when it's followed by ya, ra, and la. Ya, ra, and la are, sem, are semi vowels. When it's followed by that, optionally, the Anishwar becomes a nasalized version of the, of the, of the semi vowel coming after it we have we are not we haven't found that yet we haven't come to a, a situation like that in in Bhagavad Gita you have one example of an L with a with a little half moon and a dot on top of it an L that's an example of a Sunday well, what he's talking about a Sunday it's an optional Sunday right so sometimes it's optional sometimes it's not optional yeah but with chanting, when we're chanting Samita part, the Sunday should always be there. Just for, for right now, we should just take it. We're, we're going to always chant Sundays, with Sundays. We're not going to learn part of part. We're not going to learn to break the Sundays. If you want to learn how to chant it, breaking the Sundays, if you want to learn it to chant it slow with breaking the Sundays, it's another class. It's a different class. It's, it's, it's 201. This is 101, okay? Right, so let's first learn this. Learn Samita part first, and then if you want to learn Pada part, and if you want to learn Ganapat, then I've got a person for you in Sri Rangam who can teach you Ganapat also. Okay, no problem. All right, so now if there's no more questions about that that last class that we did, now let's move on to new new material. So the new material that I want to do is now that we've had the basic the basic lesson on Vedic chanting, what I want to do now is I want to introduce a couple of a couple of slokas, three three verses actually, two slokas and one and one verse which is not a sloka. Technically my Sanskrit teacher will say if it's not four lines of eight syllables, two lines of sixteen syllables, then it's not called a sloka. Definitely in sense that's his definition of sloka. Right? If it's got more syllables, and we learned about syllables before, right? Remember, we, we got the definition of a syllable and we learned how to count the syllables and we learned out what is a long syllable and what's a short syllable. Although there are some other rules about that which we don't want to go into right now. But basically for chanting, we learned about that by talking about the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Ha, Re, Ha being short, Re being too long because the E is twice as long as the Ha, right? Ha, Re, right? Okay. We learned about long and short syllables. So now what we want to do is we're going to learn another few. Uh, uh, we're going to learn some more. And these are going to be very useful. These are going to be very useful, I promise. Okay. And I'm sharing that with everybody. All right. Prayers for forgiveness of mistakes in chanting. Yep. That's right. As beginners, all of us, even as people who are not beginners, we should know these prayers. These are prayers. These are prayers which we should know uh, because we're going to make some mistakes. So after we make mistakes, we should beg for forgiveness for those mistakes. <clears throat> and also, uh, at the end of that, 
Now, it is an interesting question. There's another prayer here at the end. This mantra is offering everything that we do to Lord Narayana, or offering everything to Krishna, right? So, Kayena Vachamana Sendriya Arva, Bujyatmana Va, Prakate Svavavat, Karomi Yadjat Chakalam Parasmai, Narayana Iti Samadvayami. Okay, so I think. Now, the question, my question would be whether we do this first and then we ask for forgiveness of, mis of mistakes or whether we do the mistakes first and then ask, and then offer everything. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so we'll just do it as, as, as we, so let me just look here and see if I've got, in, I've got everything, if there's any, uh, yeah, should be okay. All right, so let's start off with the first one. And this is a regular sloka. That I put it on two lines instead of four. Sometimes you see in uh, BBT books, you'll see four lines of eight syllables. I've made two lines of 16 syllables. Why have I done that? I've done that to, on purpose because I want this, this uh, mark here at the end, the dunda represents a comma, and the double dunda down the end here represents a period or a full stop. Some people say full stop. And that means that is the place where we breathe. So we breathe at these two places, right? So what we're trying to do, Samita part, we're trying to chant this whole line straight through, and then the next whole line straight through. Right. So let's start off and let's see what we can do. I'll I'll start first. Yadakshara pada brasta matra hinam tu yad bhavet tat sarvam sham yatam deva narayana namo stute. Right. And then I'm going to do the next one too. Visarga bindun matrani padaksharani cha yunani chatiriktani shamashwa purushottama. Okay, so um, who, wants to, who wants to have a go? Just unmute and, and, and try. I can try. Yat akshara padam prasta matra hinam tu yat bavet tat sarvam sha sham yatam deva nara yena namo stute. Good, that very she good. Vishwana? One question first, sure. Sammy. When uh, the the T is the last uh, consonant, should it be pronounced it as bhavete, like with this small e, or that's just in Vedic recitation? How is it? Uh, it's a good question. I'm going to have to ask somebody else that question. Um, we do sometimes get now. Remember, we have that uh, that that pramana we have from uh, Patanjali says ardhamatra. Um, Vyanjana um, Adamatrikam, it says in the fourth line of that. So Vyanjana Adamatrikam means that a, 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 a consonant by itself is pronounced as a half, half snap, a half snap, a half, a half second sort of thing. So yeah, it has some, so Yadakshara Pada Brasta Matra Hinam Tuyad Bhavete. It's possible somebody could put the little K hey, there, it's possible. So I don't know that I don't know that that's a I don't think that that's a Vedic thing that it, it replies to all Sanskrit. So if you're able to do it, I I wasn't able to do it. So if you're able to do it, then we'll okay. celebrate that. Sure. <laughs> Should I do both or just the first one? As as you like. Yad akshara pada brashta matra hinam tu yad bhavet tat sarvam kshamyatam deva narayana namostute visarga bindun matrani pada pada aksharani cha nyunani chatiriktani kshamasva purushottama very good. I especially like your Narayana. It was nice. Yeah, and you got it. You 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 put that little uh, ending there on the T and Baveta, Baveta, Baveta. Okay. So, um, anybody else? 
यदक्षर पर भ्रष्ट मात्राहीन तो ये तत्सर्व क्षम्यता देवा नारायण नमोस्तु ते विसर्ग बिंदुन्मात्राणी पद पादाक्षणा चूना चातिरिक्ता क्षमस्व पुरुषोत्तम very good but with respect to the that uh, question about the bhavite they do it in vishnu sahasra naam from the recordings i've heard like even with um um that lady i can't remember her name right now <laughs> you know what i mean the the, the standard vishnu ms sahasra Subha, naam ms subalakshmi yes yeah, subalakshmi yeah. you don't even have to say yeah. subalakshmi just say ms everybody knows yeah, you say ms, MS. yeah so the she chants it like that also so I, i think probably it is applied Yeah, it's not. It's not Vedic. It's not a Vedic rule. Okay. But we can ask about it anyway. Okay. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, Governor Chari is actually much better at chanting than I am because he's he always gets the correct pronunciation and length of vowels and everything. Okay. Anybody else? Raghunath? Anybody? I don't know what my problem is when when I'm chanting in front of you guys I feel so nervous it's like I I was telling my family last time I felt like I couldn't even breathe I don't know what my problem is because I okay, don't really so, Okay so okay so pranayama is a different class pranayama is a different class so <laughs> just, just hang in there and uh and we'll work let's let's move on to the next one Kayena vachama na sindriyer va budhyatmana va prakrte swabhavat karomi yad yad yat sakalam parasme narayana yeti samarpayami i want to explain this kayena vacha manasendriya is manasa indriya put its two words here manasa indriya it becomes by the sandhi manasendriya right the r at the end here is actually a visarga which changes because of the v coming after it so it's manasa indriyaha indrayahi va but it becomes manasendriyer va buddhya atmana here we have it's this is not a double quote this is uh this is not a double quote but it's two single quotes if you're writing out this you should not put a double quote you should put as two single quotes the reason is that this is called avagraha and who knows what avagraha is avagraha is actually when you get an a either short or long which is dropped out because of sandhi so this 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 these two words are going to be buddha and atmana buddha and atmana and because of the sandhi the long a in atmana the foot that starts atmana is dropped so when a short a is dropped we put one one uh what do we what do we call this thing quote one quote a single quote in english put a single quote to show that it's missing if there if it's a long a that's le- that's left out sometimes people put a double quote in sanskrit so you'll see avagraha sometimes you'll see in text you'll see a single avagraha sometimes in text you'll see a double of agraha if you see a double of agraha you know that a long a was taken out right was dropped if you see a single of agraha it may have been a long a or a short a that's dropped you don't know because sometimes they don't mark the double of agraha but in this case i put a double quote just to explain to you that sometimes in sanskrit you're going to see anybody who's learning devanagari you'll see a double of agraha one after the other it means a long a has dropped out okay so next thing i want to explain is here we have prakrite swabhava that is actually prakritehe prakritehe they should the, the end of this the end of this word is is a visarga an h with a dot under it but the but what i did was what i did was i changed it to an s to make it easier for us to chant because the visarga ch- takes the flavor of the next coming s so it's a regular dental s without any accent on it or under it and therefore it becomes the same type of s so prakrite he 
Swabhavat becomes quick in Padapat, right? Would become in Samhita part, just reading it all the way through. Prakriti Swabhavat, Prakriti Swabhavat. That the pronunciation is probably not optional. So if you hear somebody, if you hear somebody saying Prakriti Swabhavat, Prakriti Swabhavat, it's like when you hear the people saying Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. It's shanti, shanti, shanti. Only the last one, which comes before the, 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 breath, the breath stop, the period, the full stop. Only the last one is fully echoed. The, the, the sarga is fully echoed. Okay, so prakrite swabhavat. Prakrite swabhavat. Karomi yad yad shakalam parasmai. Another thing, this yad yat, yad yat is the same word. The same word is yad and the same word is yat. But when, 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 when yad is followed by a y, it's yad. When yad is followed by an s, it's yat. It's the same word. It's just with different sundis. Okay. Now, th fourth line, narayanayeti. Narayanayeti. The e again is a combination of a and e. Becomes a. Right? So that's a sundi. Right, so it's actually Narayana Iti, Narayana Iti, but it becomes Narayana Iti, Narayana Iti, Samarpayami. Okay, so I'm going to chant this again, and then we'll have a, we'll just try this one. Uh, there, there Quest, is an question. R missing there, Samarpayami. Huh? There is an R missing, correct? At the end, Samarpayami. Samarpayami. I was thinking the same. Yeah. I was Sorry. going to ask that. Yeah, thank you, for the, thank you for correcting me. This happens every day when I do the Gita class. When I write stuff out for my Sanskrit teacher, he always corrects me. Thank you for Yeah. I just, I wrote it out quickly before class. I didn't go over it. Properly. Okay. Samarpayami. Yes. And we all know the word Samarpayami from doing pujas, right? Asanam Samarpayami. Padjum Samarpayami. What does it mean? It means I offer unto you. I offer unto you. Samarpayami. Right? So what are we offering? We're offering unto Lord Narayana, Krishna. We're offering everything. All of everything that we've done previously. This is a very, this is very often said at the end of doing anything we say. We say this at the end to offer everything that we've done previous to this to Krishna. Right? And even after this, we can say, Shri Krishna, Paramastu, Shri Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. There's some, there's some other things. I'll add some other things maybe next time like that, make it more Krishna friendly for you guys. Right? If you... If you if you want some more things with Krishna, okay. So kaina vacha manasendriyarva budjatmana va prakateswa bhavat karomi yad yad sakalam parasme narayana yeti samarpayami. Who wants to try? Raganas goes hand up. Kaina. Okay, Africa. Go ahead. Kaye Navacha Manasindri Yeva Budiat Manava Prokitir Swabhavat Karomi Yit Yit Sakalam Parasmai Nara Yena Yitisama Payami. Okay, good. Just remember the longs and shorts. Let's have a look at the longs and shorts here. Uh, Dave Rishi, that was very good. So first, the first syllable is ka, long. Second syllable is ye, long. E is a long, right? That third syllable, na, short. Fourth syllable, va, long. Sec next syllable, cha, long. Ma, short. Na, short, right? Se or sen, short. Now the thing is, it's interesting. There's actually a, there's actually a rule in Sanskrit grammar when a, I'm sorry, sen is long, e is long, sorry. I was gonna say if it's short, but it's considered long because it's before a content consonant. There's a, there's a, but we didn't get that yet. We didn't get a rule like that yet. So let's say that rule for later. Uh, say, say or sen, 
right? Because sometimes it's difficult to say Indri, Indri, right? So, so Sen is the next syllable, right? Long, Dri, right? Short, Yer is what? Long, because AI is long, right? La, long, Bu, Bu is long, right? Da, long, Ma, short, long, long, short, short, long. Okay, like that. So, Devarishi, when I heard you, I heard the bavat. I heard it very nicely. I heard that long, very nicely. But when I when you got down here to Narayana Yeti, I heard Narai. You have to Narayana Yeti. Yay, yeti has to be a little bit longer. Yeah, that's all. That's all. That's all I wanted to say about that. Anybody else want to try? But it was very good. Raghunath, nobody's going to interrupt you now. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Godatmana Vapakati Swapavat Karomiyad Yarsa Kalampas Pad Narayanitisamapayami. Okay, so we had the second half of the Nath brothers here, right? We have Ragadath and Yadunath. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yadunath. That was very good. I like that. And now we're going to have the second Nath brother, Mr. Raghunath. Kaye Navacha Mana Sendri Erva Hudhyatmana Vaprakate Swabhavat Karomi Yadyat Sakalam Parasmai Narayana Yeti Samar Payami. Good, great, excellent. Anybody else? Kayena vacha manasendriyeva, budhyatmanava prakriti svabhavate, karumi yad yad sakalam parasmai, narayana yeti samar payami. I wanted to ask one thing, Swami, with that budhatmana, um, I may have missed this because I was doing some other things while I had it in my ear. But yes, is we, it know, we, know that, we know we know that you already know this, so go ahead. No, I just want I, is it buddhyatmana instead of buddhatmana? Okay. I was just looking at um, okay, okay, he found another mistake. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh. Okay, <laughs> I, I didn't check, I just wrote this out this morning, so I, I excuse me, everybody. All right, buddhyat, buddhyat, buddhyatmana. Pujyatmana, yeah. Okay. The deficiencies of the of the teacher will be seen in the in the video. The deficiencies of the students will be edited out of the video. For my night channel sandaram, for my hum humility, I need to show all my deficiencies. Okay. So now we have these three verses. So these three verses are good at, at the end of everything. Anything that we do, uh, we can do them. And uh, we can even add to them. As I say, there's some other things that we can say, Shri Krishna, Paramastu, Shri Krishna, Krishna, Krishna at the end. Or, uh, and I'll, I'll add that next time. Uh, but let's, let's start from the beginning and let's go through. I'll do it first. Yadakshara parabrasta matrahinam tu yadbhavet. Tatsarvam sham yatam deva narayana namostute Visar gabindun matrani pada paraksharani cha Yunani chitcha tiriktani chamashwa purushottama Kayena vacha manasendri erva budyatmana va prakateswa bhavat Paromi yad yat sakalam parasmai narayana yeti samarpayami Okay, who wants to try? Govindachari. 
Show us all. Okay, Swami. Show us all how it's done. And also make sure that when somebody comes to um, see okay. us, one second. No, I'm not so sure about that, but anyway. I'll... Very carefully. Yad akshara pada bhrashta matra hinam tu yad bhavete tat sarvam shamyatam deva nara yana namostute visarga bindun matrani pada pad pad haksharani cha Nunani chatiriktani, Shamasva Purushotama, Kayena vachamana sendreva, Budhyatmanava prakrateswa bhavate, Karomi yad yad sakalam parasme, Narayana yiti samar payami, Sarvam shi Krishna arpanamastu, Shi Krishna Krishna Krishna. Show off. <laughs> I know you're going to say that. <laughs> it's only by your mercy, Swami. You're the teacher. You're the that's, guru. That's gonna get it. That's gonna get edited. Okay. So, <laughs> any any pra any praise of the teacher gets edited out. Okay. So, all right. So, anybody else want to try? I can I, try. Anybody? Yeah, doctor. Yeah, doctor. Apada brashta matra hi nam tu yat bhavet. That's Taravam Kshamyatam Deva Narayano Namastute Visarga Bindun Matrani Pada Padaksharanicha Nunani Chatiriktani Shamasva Purushotama Kayina Vachamana Sindriyairva Buddhyatmana Va Prakritisva Bhavad Karomi Yat Yat Sakalam Parasmai Narayana Yeti Samarpayami Good, good. And uh, again, the Tay, I hear the Tay. You're the expert at putting the Tay on. So thank you very much for that. Uh, do we have anybody else? Ladies, don't feel shy if you want to. She's shy. She's saying she's shy. I know. That's what I'm saying. Don't, don't be shy. Care. Just do it. Nobody cares. <laughs> Okay, she will try. Okay. Yadak sharapada brasta matra hinam tu yad bhavet tat sarvam kshayatam deva narayana namostute visarga vindum matrani pada padak sharanita nyunani tatrikirtani kshama swa purushadam. Kayena vata mas mana sendri yaiba budyat mana va prakrites swavavat karomi yat yat sakalam par smai naraya nayeti smara payami. Okay, good, good. Uh, I have smart. Yummy, yeah, yummy, yummy. Okay, so yeah, I just have a, a so my suggestion is. Uh, what was the tip that I gave in the last few classes? I said, uh, if you really want to get it right, try just chanting really slowly each syllable one after another and you'll get it right. Uh, for instance, I heard here, no M when you send ch this, 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 this word. Uh, there's, there's an M here before the Y. So it, I heard you say sh shayatam, sham yatam. Sham Yatam. So it's made up of Sham and Ya and Tam. Sham Yatam. Yeah. Down here, uh, I heard I heard Purushottam. I heard you saying Hindi. Purushottam without the A at the end. Purushottama. Purushottama. We don't say Arjun. We don't say Purushottam. We say Purushottama in Sanskrit. It's a short A at the end, but it still has to be there. Uh, you had some problem with this one. New Nani. New Nani. New Nani. So we just like this. New Na Ni. New Nani. New Nani. The last syllable is short, but the other two are long. New Nani. New Nani. And this is also a bit of a tongue twister. Cha, T, 
Chatirikthani. 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 Okay, so I think maybe maybe what we can do is from we can we can from now on what we can do is we go through the words one by one. I think it'll, this will be very good for us if we do word for word. We start off by doing word for word. So here we this for instance it will be word for word. Yad, akshara, hada, brashta, matra, hinam, tu, yad, bavet, tat, sarvam, sham yatam, sham yatam, deva, narayana, namostute, visar visarga. Bindun, Matrani, Pada, Padaksharani, Cha, Yunani, Chatiriktani, Chamashwa, Chamashwa. You can say Chamashwa or you can say Chamashwa. Normally, this is another, uh, another interesting point. When you get a V, when you get the letter V in a conjunct consonant, like an SV, SV, like in Swami, we don't usually say Swami, we usually say Swami. So it becomes fully, pout, fully, fully labial, only using the lips. Otherwise, V, the, the Varna, the letter V, v Vakarasya Dantostam, it's supposed to be made with the teeth and the lips. Panini says it's made with the teeth and the lips. V. Va, the top teeth touching the bottom lip. Va, 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 va. But it's also wa, 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 wa. It's also both lips. Wa. So when is it pronounced va and when is it pronounced wa? The, the, the usual thing is that it's pronounced, it's pronounced va with the teeth and the lips when it comes by itself and when it's mixed with another in a, in a, like, like in twa, twa, like in t, TVA or in SVA, twa or swa is pronounced actually twa and swa. So swami. Yeah, so it's pronounced like a wa usually when it comes in a conjunct. That's just a little, you know, I, I don't know the exact grammatical rule for that. If you want me to find out, I will find out. But that's just a, that's just a tip. Okay, so we have this. Chamashwa, chamashwa, I would say, chamashwa, chamashwa, sorry, swa, not schwa, swa, swa, chamashwa, chamashwa. Purushottama, okay, so then down here was very, was, was pretty good, pretty good, nice. Okay, so again, with Narayana Aiti, remember that Nara, Naraya, Nayeti, so it's long, long, short, Long, long, short, right? Na la ya, na ye, ye ti, na ye ti. So that good. Okay. So did do we have uh, did David Rishi try the whole thing or not? Didn't want to try or not try. Next time. Yat akshara pada basta. Matra hinam tu yat bhavet. Tat savam sham yatam deva. Narayana namostuti. Vishaga bindu matrani. Pada pad, padaksharani cha. New Nani Chat Trick Trick Tani Shamaswa Purusho Tama Ya Kaye Na Vacha Manasindri Eva Buddhyat Mana Va Pakati Swabad Karomi yet yet 
सखलम हरस्मय नारायणायति समाप्यामि Good. That was good. Now, what I want you to do, this is the only word that you had a real big problem with was this one. So, I've broken it up into syllables. Now you now I'm going to say it and I want you to repeat it after me. Chatiriktani. 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 Very good. Chatiriktani. Fabulous. Chatiriktani. Okay. So if you ever get a tongue twister, if you get these tongue twisters like like this one, Nunani. How do you say that? Nunani. 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 Then just break it up like that, put the put the dashes in between and then try to sound it out syllable by syllable and you'll get it. Do it slowly like this first and you will get it. If you get it, something that looks like a big tongue twister you just do it like that like this same thing here we going you just have to know where to put sham sham i'm sorry excuse me wrong place sha 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 ma 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 swa 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 chama swa chama swa chama swa that's how you do it chama yeah. swa Shamaswa. Shamaswa. Yeah. Okay, so great. Okay, so we just have to figure out where to put the dashes. And we put the dashes in when we're learning something for the first time if there's a tongue twister sort of uh combination of letters that is very difficult for us to pronounce, then we just say it slowly looking at each syllable by syllable and we'll get it right. And we'll get it right. Okay, so that's yeah. question. Yes, um I was saying that to learn mantra like me I used to have it difficult only the time I if I'm able to get the mantra recited then like audio I listen to it from there I will be able to catch the mantra on time right okay Fine. fair enough okay and that's the way we actually should learn is we should just learn by hearing but we since we're more vi we're visual people and we have the internet we can also do it like this also it, it helps us uh, another tip is if you want to learn a mantra if you want to learn anything if you want to learn anything engage as many of the senses that you have in that thing so hear it see it write it do it as many different ways as you can and you and you you know if you have the interest to learn it you'll learn it if you have no interest to learn a mantra forget it you'll never learn it you have to have some interest in learning it like that but anyway so here uh, today we did we did these these mantras we should finish every class with these mantras we'll make a we'll make a we, we should start with shri guru bhyo namaha hari om we should start with asma guru bhyo namaha and we should and we should also we're going to learn another one maybe next class we're going to learn another one to start the class and that is and i'll give you a bit of a hint for that we're going to learn the prayer to the teacher The prayer to the teacher is Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bhunatu Sahaviryam Karavavahe Ejaspinavadita Mastuma Pidvishavahe Om Shanti 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 Right, so we're going to learn that because that is a prayer for cooperation between the teacher and the and the students, and that's usually how all Vedic chanting classes start. So that's next time we're going to learn that one. We've got so we've got the beginning. We're going to be successful because we're uh, we're offering obeisances to the guru. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to pray for cooperation and and knowledge with the teacher, and then we're going to finish off by praying praying for forgiveness for any mistakes. and we're also going to offer everything that we've done to the supreme personality of god shri krishna so so in this way the classes should be very very um fruitful if we do it in this way and anything in the in the in the middle will be new each time like that but we should try to get these things down uh and uh, as a beginning and an end and then whatever comes in the middle will change okay does everybody agree is it a good idea okay So just before we go 
uh, we didn't actually learn, we haven't actually learned a mantra. So I'm gonna teach you a mantra right now that you can, that you can put in the middle of your, of, your, of your chanting practice. And that is, according to, according to the Sahasranama of uh, Lord Vishnu, right? In the, in the Palashruti, which is, gives the fruit of everything, in, there's one verse there in the Palashruti that says, Sri Rama, 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 Iti, Rama, Rama, Mano, Rama, Sahasranama, Tatulyam, Rama, Nama, Varana, Ne. That, it means that this, your cha- it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a prayer by, uh, par- par- uh, by Shiva. He says, I'm chanting, always chanting the name of Rama, and this, uh, this name of Rama is equal to a thousand names of Vishnu. So later on, we'll learn the thousand names of Vishnu or as many names as we can. And that'll help also with pronunciation. And, uh, and, <laughs> and somebody's writing to me in chat. Okay, so we're gonna finish very, very soon here. Um, yeah, Raghana said, he said goodbye. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so Vishnu Sahasranama, and Vishnu Sahasranama also, I'm gonna give some quotes about how Vishnu Sahasranama is a very great thing to learn for other reasons, for many reasons like that. But there's this mantra that says, that this holy name of Rama, these two syllables, Ra, long, uh, R, long A, M, short A, Rama, is equal to the whole thousand names of Vishnu. So, the first thing that we learn is, we can learn, instead of, if we can't chant the whole thousand names of Vishnu, we can just chant Rama, Rama. So that's your mantra for today, Rama. Okay? Everything else was, was, in the beginning and the end. In the beginning and the end. The actual mantra we learn is Rama. That's it. And it equal to a thousand names of Vishnu. So now you can bragging rights. You have bragging rights that you've learned a thousand names of Vishnu today by just chanting the word Rama. Right? So we'll I'll 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 give the pramanas for that and everything in the next class. Like that. Now, for those persons who have more time in their days, right? And they and they they can chant more than just Rama, right? There are other mantras which are longer than Rama, which are also great mantras to chant. And we know some of them like Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and we know some other mantras too, right? So although Rama equals a thousand names of Vishnu and Krishna also means it equals a thousand names of Vishnu, still in thousand names of Vishnu, we also get Rama and Krishna. So we can learn thousand names of Vishnu, but there's also another, another one that I'll teach you, which is only 28 names. Because the thousand names of Vishnu was spoken by Bhishma Dev on the bed of arrows in Mahabharata while he was dying. He was, it was spoken by him to Yudhisthira. And Yudhisthira was, Yudhisthira was, the, was the son of da, da, Dhammaraj, Yamaraj. And he was, he was uh, very in- intellectual. And Arjuna was his brother, but Arjuna was a little bit more passionate than Yudhisthira. So he, Ar- Arjuna asked to Krishna, Krishna, I hear that Yudhisthira uh, is hearing these thousand names of Vishnu from Bhishma. But he said, please give me a shortcut way to do thousand names of Vishnu. So I gave you one shortcut way just now, Rama, Rama. But there's another shortcut way, which is not just not as short as Rama, but not as long as thousand names of Vishnu and gives the same benefits as thousand names of Vishnu. And that is 28 names of Vishnu. So I will prepare that also for next class. And uh, we can learn that so that we know Vishnu Sas, we can say that we are chanting Vishnu Sasanam. Right? Very, very easy. Uh, Arjuna Ovacha, Kimnu Nama Sahasrani, Japate Chapuna Punaha, Yani Namani Divyani, Tani Chakrasha Keshavaha, Sri Bhagavan Ovacha, Matsyam Komam Paraham Cha, Vamanam Chachinadanam, Govindam Pudri Kaksham Madhavam Madhusudanam. Padmanabham, Sahasraksham, Vanamalim, Havayudam, Govardhanam, Rishikesham, Vaikuntam, Purushottamam, Vishparupam, Vasudevam, Ramam, Narayanam, Harim, Dev, uh, Ananta Krishna, Gopalam, Japatone, Sipatakam, Dhavam, Kodi Pradhanasya, Ashwamera, Satasita, Kanyadana, Sahasranam, Palam, Prapnoti, Manavaha, Amayamva, Purnamasyam, Ekarasyam, Tadevacha, Sanjakale, Smarinityam, Patakale, Tadevacha, it is Sri Krishna Arjuna Sambade, Sri Vishnu Rastavim Sarinam Sotram Sampurnam, Adiyom Tatsar, Sri Krishna Paramastu, Sri Krishna Krishna Krishna. So this is very, very quick. Instead of taking 45, half an hour to 45 minutes to chant 107, 108 verses, 
plus the Palashruti, one whole chapter of Mahabharata. We can finish it off in <clears throat> one minute or two minutes. We can chant the whole Vishnu Sahasranam, get the same benefit with these main names, the main names of, of, of Sri Manarayana or the main names of Lord Krishna.